Hey GP learners, do you want to know how you can send documents to patients using Acurix? On this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. Whether it's a Med3 or whether it's a pathology form, we're going to show you how. Let's take enhance your primary care and learning. This is the first time we're meeting. I'm Dr. Gandalf of EGP Learning World, supporting you with technology enhanced primary care and learning. In this episode, I'm going to show you how you can send a Med3 to a patient using SMS, as well as sending other kind of documents like pathology forms, try and make yours and your patients' lives easier, particularly in this COVID in the scenario we've got. In order to do this, you do need the Acurix system, which is what I'm going to be showing, and I am showing you on System 1 because that's what I use. It's dead easy to do, and if you haven't seen how to download Acurix, check out some of our other videos, including our Acurix playlist, which shows you a lot more of the functionality that you can get from the system as well. Effectively, if you want to do a Med3, it's pretty easy. So go into the Med3 tab on a patient. So this is Bugs Bunny, our test patient that we've got. Just simply create a Med3. Uh, so new Med3 can be for whatever you want. Let's talk about low back pain, common thing. And let's say I'm going to give this to the patient for a week. And there we go. Fairly simple med three. Now, in terms of what you need to do in order to make this into a digital version that you can send to the patient, simply you go to printer settings and then you select the printer that you want. And as you can see, mine's already gone to Microsoft Print to PDF. And this is the selection that you need rather than printing off a hard copy. You've got various options, as you can see, Microsoft Print to PDF and click OK, and then click OK and print. When you do that, it will then ask you where you want to save the document. So pick a folder on your desktop or on your shared drive or somewhere that's secure and label it as something that you know you're gonna to get to on a regular basis. So as you can see, I've got this on my desktop, on my work PC, and I've got it as delete icon, and you'll see why in a second. Then you put the name of the patient or something that's relevant that helps you identify that this is for that particular patient. And this is just in case if you've got a few files in there. I wouldn't recommend keeping too many and deleting them on a regular basis, but for argument's sake, let's label this one up. So we're going to have BB for Bugs Bunny and date of birth 1.1.1910. Bugs are doing really well, still working at that age. And then you click save. So that's created the Med3 in a digital format. We're going to go open that now. So if we go to our file, desktop, delete. And as you can see, this is the PDF file. I'm going to open it. And in doing so, it comes across here. Now, as you can see, it has saved it in the wrong format rather than being you know, visible. It's a um, portrait format, but this it doesn't really enable it to be easily signed. So you do need to turn it on its side. And to do that, you just go to view rotate view and let's turn it clockwise and there we go it's a bit more sensible now and the reason you need to do this is to digitally sign it so it makes sense because if we did it the other way i'm afraid it's not going to sign very effectively the next thing you need to then do is digitally sign the med3 now there's various different ways you can do this you could print it off sign it scan it back in and then you've got yourself a digital copy but that's quite a big workaround an alternative option is to use the digital signing mechanism available in Adobe Acrobat Reader, which is the program you can see here and pretty much standard on most NHS computers. It's dead easy to do. You simply click on the sign button here that you can see, or as you can see, there's an alternative tab here called fill and sign. By clicking on that, it gives you the options of adding signature and you simply click on the plus sign. And then you've got various options. You can either type in your signature. So imagine if it's going to be Dr. Mickey Mouse doing this. And as you can see, you can change the style of handwriting if you prefer. If you don't like using that method, if you'd rather have something a little bit more original and less likely to be copied, you could try and draw it. And you can either do this with a mouse or if you have a tablet computer and stuff that does this, you can use a pen. So we can go for Mickey. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm not great at doing this. And leave it at that. Or you can upload an image. And this may be a better way if you're doing this on a regular basis to create your own digitally signed image that you can then use. So again, you can do this by various different ways. You can, use, If you've got a tablet computer, you can sign it and then turn that into a JPEG that you can upload. Or you can just simply do your signature, take a photo, and then crop it down so you've got the relevant file. As you can see, you can then just upload it like an image. So I've done Mickey Mouse is here. And as you can see, it adds the signature there. And when you click apply, it gives you the, the signature that you can just put into the box there. 
And if you want to resize it because it's too big, move it around, there you go. And the real benefit of doing it this way is that it remembers the signature that you've used. So if I click on the sign button, as you can see, it has stored my signature there. So I can use that for future documents as well. And then you simply save it. So file, save as, click the same one again and save. I'll ask to confirm that you want to save on that one. And you click yes. And that's it. Done. You now have a digitally signed Med3 that you can send. So how do we then send this to the patient? Well, this is where Accurix comes in. You simply click on the SMS capabilities. So you've got patient's number here. You could use a template if you want to. I'm not gonna, but I'm just gonna simply say, dear Mr. Big Bugs Bunny, here is your Med3 fit note. And then simply you click on attach file. When you click on that, you need to find the relevant file. So that's why it's important to label it so you can remember which one it is. Select, open, and then as you can see, it gives you the option of sending it. If you wanted to, you could add an extra ability for the patient to reply back. I don't really see that's necessary in this situation, but there may be other situations where you want to. And then click send and save. It'll ask you to confirm that you've got the correct document. Clearly, there's an extra security step to make sure you're doing this properly. And then you can send the message from there. And we're done. So now it's sent that as a text message to the relevant person. Unfortunately, it's not delivered because that's a fake number. Oh well, need to make sure you use a proper number then, isn't it? However, to show you what the Med3 looks like from the patient's perspective, if you click on the Flurry, it asks you to add in the date of birth of the patient. So 01, 01, 1910, Royal Bugs Bunny patient. Click continue. And here we go. Here's the Med3 for the patient. And as you can see, the signature's just there. So the next thing I wanted to show you is how you can send things like pathology forms as well, because this may be something that's relevant to you. So in system one, we create this using the ICE method. So pathology, I'm going to go for a new pathology request. That's going to open up here. And let's just say we're going to do a simple use and ease. And then click on continue. It gives me the option of adding clinical information. So let's just say this is part of the med review. So I'm going to collect specimen later. And then I need to print off a summary for this order. And yeah, we need to click the infection button. And then I simply accept the request. And similar to the way that we do Med3, you need to make sure you select the Microsoft Print to PDF option. So this creates a PDF document that you can send electronically. So click Print and then Proceed. And as you can see, it gives me the option of saving this document again. So let's go for bb.1.1.10.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1
And as always, EGP Learning is here to help save you and your patients time by tech enhancing your primary care and learning. Catch you in the next episode.